specifically about mid-foot collapse and as well as shoulder dislocation. We, uh, if we're going to talk about emerging trends, now there's only two orthopods in the room, but this is cool for us. Okay? Um, and it, it, it expands the level, the number of patients and the number of comorbidities that are allowed in the patients um, for us to operate on. And I think before we would have said we can't operate on you. And so I am a consultant for Right Medical, so you will see a picture of a frame. I'm not going to talk about who made it. Uh, so we all know about diabetes. We talk, we look at this picture for okay, midfoot collapse, there's an ulcer, okay? And we know people get sharp. Okay, so we can do it two ways. We can do the one on the left, right? Which is, you know, improperly corrected, there is not a proper midfoot osteotomy, we have a restored Murray's angle, it's not a plantar grade foot, still rock a bottom foot, bad, right? We all agree, that's not good. On the right, it's my story. Uh, we can agree that we have restored Mary's angle, it's a plantar grade foot, uh, using a beam and a frame. So what's, that's nothing novel about that, Mickey Pinzer described that 20 years ago, okay? So, thinking about midfoot osteotis, what do we have to do? Well, we have to resect, you know, a large portion of bone to be able to reduce that foot. Don't we? we have to bring the first ray down to the inclination angle of the talus, okay? So how do we do that? Well, we make a big cut, right? We make a big incision and we take out a piece of bone. That osteotomy is reversed, but it's the best picture I could find to show you what taking out a big piece of bone is like. Okay. So now we've got a person with an ulcer, and as we heard from, uh, from all these guys who are much smarter than me, that ulcer is probably infected, right? Like it's probably broke down to bone, it's probably got osteomyelitis, and now we're going to put in plates and screws, right? To try and offload that ulcer by restoring the anatomy of the foot. Bad idea, right? And we, not only do we know that that's a bad idea, we've actually published literature saying it's a really bad idea. Right? So if you have people who have osteopenia, obesity, they're immunocompromised, they got a fractured ulcer, they got drainage, they got osteomyelitis, it's a really bad idea to put plates and screws in. Like, are we dumb? So 2003, Mickey wrote a paper saying, why don't you just use this thing, right? Why don't you just hold the foot in position by doing osteopenia and offloading the ulcer? And we all agree this is a really, really good idea. So what's emerging, what's new? Well, all these new, all these frames now are so easy to put on that even I can do uh, and there's Mickey's paper. Okay, so now the other interesting part is one of the things that I do a lot in my surgeries, I do bunion surgery, I know, major problem. But we now do it minimally invasively. So we do it through tiny cocal incisions. And then somebody who is much, much smarter than me, uh, Dr. Miller, who I've met a few times and is actually really bright, she said, well, wait a second, if you can do bunion surgery, which is like, you know, semi-cosmetic with a minimally invasive burr, why can't you do something useful with it and do a midfoot osteotomy? So instead of making an incision to take out all that bone in the middle of the foot, now we can use a burr. And we can do it between nerve vascular planes, we can do it safely in the neuropathy, so there, even if there is some minor neurologic issues, they're not going to feel anything, but we're going to be able to restore the anatomy through a poke hole, right? Not through an incision. And there, there's a, our, our patient, right? So we did the midfoot osteotomy, we did it all through poke hole, and there's not a single incision, right? There's not an incision in this patient. We've been able to restore the plantar grade nature of her foot, right? So, minimally invasive techniques, and nemesis in particular, is something that we think is really exciting. We think people are going to really do a lot better because we know that the complication rates from open surgery for Sharko is 50%, right? And we know that they get wound infections 50% of the time. And so, this is going to minimize that for us. And we think that this is uh, something that in Canada, is going to be readily accessible through orthopedic surgery before name surgery within the next year. And there's only two guys in Canada now that do it, but me and Dr. Younger are gonna be able to do it. Thanks.